Hey folks, in this uh, quick video, I'm going to show you the raw mechanics of, of in deploying uh, regression using the data analysis tool pack in Excel. So this is going to just show how we move our cursor and handle things so it's willing to run. So in this example, uh, arbitrarily, I'm going to say, let's see if we can predict spending on season passes. Just highlighting and giving it a color so we can see it. And then I'm interested in using, let's say, game comp rating, continuous variable, membership status, but since this is written here, I need to use the dummy code version over here, and also average session length as predictors. So we have three predictors. Now, the rule for deploying regression in Excel using the data analysis tool pack is it doesn't matter where the dependent variable is, the Y that we want to predict, but our predictors need to be all next to each other so we can select them. So how do we do that? So probably the easiest way is we just click up here in the columns, slowly hover over to selection, just slide that over to some empty space. And then we do the exact same thing for all the other predictors. There we go. So notice now all of our predictors, the X's or the independent variables, are all together. And so, and spending is still over here, that doesn't matter. So if we go now to data, and we already need to have our data analysis tool pack activated. Google how to do that if for some reason it's not available to you. We just scroll down here to regression. And for our Y range, that's our dependent variable. Actually, just type it in manually, the range. It's like G. In our case, G1 all the way down to, we have 1,500 records of uh, G1501, uh, or click here, and we can select it. So we selected it there, say G1 to G1501. And then for our X range, we're going to need to select... Again, all those rows, but we also need to select all three columns. So we have a you know, wider range this time. So let's scroll back up. And since they're all together, I can just click, drag, and slide across. So now it's, in my case, since I put them in column P, Q, and R, it's P1 to R1 for now. And then as I keep holding and dragging, it goes all the way down. You got to make that big rectangle. And we see that it's P1 to R1. Five zero one. So I got. I've selected that whole rectangle. Double check. We're good. We did have our labels in the first row. That's what it's asking for, right? We selected that first row with the names. Select our confidence interval. Put our results in a new worksheet. It's called example for now. Name anything you want, and we can ask for any additional output we want. In the class, we just ask for the standard normal residuals, like our error for each one of these 1,500 predictions our model is going to make. And then we click OK. Here we get our results. Easy thing to do here is you can just go up in between like each column and quickly double click. That's a way to sort of adjust the column widths. So quick look. And quickly, you're like, oh, wow, there's a lot of decimals that we don't need. So you can select, and you can do it. I'm not going to do this for all of them, but you can see here. Go home. I can reduce these decimals a bit so it's a little easier to look at. And I can do that, you know, other places here as well. And I could do more formatting using all the tools under the home and the cells I select to make this a little more easier to parse. And there we go. And at this point, we would just proceed with uh, investigating and assessing our overall model performance as we did in class and our individual predictors. So that's it. That is how you mechanically uh, run multiple linear regression with multiple predictors that don't start off in the same place uh, in Excel.